Coins embedded in pocket. Hello and welcome to my Boxing Day mainstream. This is uh, probably the last of the sort of Christmassy themes and uh, Christmassy streams I'm going to do, and um, not necessarily one with Christmassy games, but uh, that time of year, you know, with Christmassy backgrounds and the like. So as you can see, we've got some nice baubles and things, all fun photos that um, Evie took and uh, provided to me to put through Photoshop and have some fun with. Anyway. Let me have a look in the chat and see who's here. Uh, we've got Cow saying a merry Boxing Day and merry Boxing Day to you, Cow. Um, we've got Stephen hoping I had a great Christmas. I had quite a tired Christmas. I spent a lot of it in bed. Uh, pretty exhausting, but uh, thank you, and I, I hope you did too. We've got Aussie Guy saying hello. Aussie Guy with the facts, as often is the case, and already dropping one by about uh, Lijak and Konami. And it's unsure when Lijak's uh, president moved to Konami, probably around 81. We've also uh, got, if I scroll down, Carlo. Uh, Carlo with the final what what, because uh, Cow seems to think we're going to be playing some final lap today. We might, but um, we might not either. We've got uh, Thomas. We've got uh, Sean Sutton, who kindly do uh, donated £5 in the build of the stream. So thank you for that, uh, Sean. Always much a much appreciated and um, we'll go towards the drinks and things that get consumed on the stream uh, we've got melody we've got bruno we've got my other half evie who as i said provided the background images that i photoshopped up and we've got bob um i'm from missing we've got john harris saying happy holidays happy holidays to you uh, John, I hope you're doing well. Um, not a name I recognise in here, so if you're new, uh, feel free to um, say what what made you decide to drop in here, what interests you and everything else, and, and chat along with everybody if you feel like chatting. Uh, Miss Outer Heaven's here too. And if I've missed anybody, I'm sorry, I think that's everybody who said something. But uh, anyway, welcome everybody. And since it's Boxing Day... I figured we'll start with a game with boxing in the title, really. I mean, so I'm not really going for an overall theme here, but boxing, boxing bugs is a fun little vector game, isn't it? So let's uh, turn my volume back up, actually, and coin it up and see where we go. Oh, main fan sent you, yeah. Main fan, main fan likes to promote the stream, and main fan does a lot of really good videos of his own, actually, where he will sometimes take the games I've been playing on these streams and do them in his own little uh, hidden gem search videos, which is a kind of nice thing to do. So, let's see. Got a bit of boxing bugs. So, this is one of those that um, improved quite significantly. Uh, not last year, but the year before, when um, Aaron added the... I think it was Aaron added the uh, discrete sound. It's a very simple little vector game where you've got to try and defend your position by blowing up the enemies and stopping the bombs from blowing up your walls, basically. Yeah, keep them away before they blow up, and they say, I'm vulnerable now because the bomb blew up there. And you can use your um, boxing glove to punch things out of the way. So you fire from one end, you use the boxing glove from the other. And 
and uh, doing it correctly is quite important. You've never seen this one before, uh, Neutrino. I have played it on stream before. I think I played it when the Discrete Sound was added. It's, uh, I think it's one of the better vector games. A lot of the vector games are very good looking, but don't always hold up in terms of gameplay. I mean, things like War of the Worlds especially comes to mind. But this one is... Uh, it's, it's, it's got that simple quality that makes it a good fun game. But at the same time, you do have to be on your toes, otherwise th those ones will attack you with boxing gloves of their own and uh, knock you out. You must fight 12 bugs. Uh, main bugs or... I don't know, we've been looking at lots of main bugs in recent times. If you can punch them, it's... It's good. <laughs> of course, if you don't blow the bombs up in time, you die pretty quickly. And yeah, you've got these special moves that are just moves everything around a little bit. Which, yeah, you have limited uses of that, like most of these games where there's a special move. Um, well, in the early 80s, uh, vector games were incredibly popular, so I guess the companies that were making them ended up with their games in many places. Ah, oh, that's Carlo. Can you punch the bombs? No, you can't punch the bombs. Your punch goes through the bombs. You have to blast the bombs. But you can uh, stun the enemies by uh, punching the enemies. and That's why you have to quickly rotate if you want to fire at the bombs and you can't just use the boxing glove and everything. You know, I am playing with my mouse, yes. How, how did you guess? I mean, it might be easier with uh, some other controller scene, but... I'm not good at this game. I, I like this game, but I'm not good at this game at all. But I figured it would be a, a good one to start with. Now, we may look at one or two other games with boxing in the title, because it's Boxing Day, but I don't want it to be too cheesy. The only new, the only vector game you played in the arcades was Tempest. Um, well, that's a, definitely a good one. I think I think my favourite is always going to be the Star Wars one. I mean, that the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars vector game is just... You know, absolute classic. I'm not even a big Star Wars fan, but that vector game is um, something special. Oh, oh. Bombs in games is, is quite a common uh, common concept, too. There's so many games with bombs, and obviously you've got Bomb Jack, where the bombs never explode. Um, but it's just uh, it's one of those things, Bomber Mans, and, you know, obviously Namco's Warp Warp, which kind of... Acts. It's a bit like Bomberman before Bomberman in stages. There's all sorts. Um... But yes, I like to punch bombs. I mean, I don't advise punching bombs in real life. Well, yeah, in fact, you're not punching the bombs here, but, you know, shooting bombs. It tends to not end too well. I mean, the, the one thing you probably don't want to be doing is, um, you know, putting a bullet through a bomb. Extreme Vector. Yeah, this one is interesting. It's a, say, it's a simple, fun game. It's a defend your position, watch what's going on, make sure to shoot things quickly and get them out of the way, and uh, also punch in the opposite direction to stun the bugs, or kill the bugs. Oh. But unfortunately, I'm wasting my um, superchargers. Now, you do have to pay careful attention to that one, because those ones will get you. these little cutscenes. Now I think um, this probably works better with the visual controls which I'd assume would be a spinner. I'm trying to play it on mouse which is not ideal but is playable. Yeah, vector games, I mean you still see them around at, at, at special events and the like but in terms of being on, a, in lo on location in actual arcades uh, their time was very much early, late 70s, early 80s wasn't it? Um, but to the credit of the people who are fans of them, they've maintained a lot of them really well. There's some fantastic looking ones where the monitors, you couldn't tell, uh, you know, a day beyond the, the day they were released. Um, oh. Nope. You'll never forgive Dave and Busters for getting rid of an eight-player Daytona USA cow. The problem is, an eight-player Daytona USA, as much money as it was making, takes up a lot of space. I know there was one in London I saw, probably like 10, 15 years ago now, but it was so big. 
I mean, if you've got one of those in your arcade, you're not going to get much else in there. Uh, yeah, I mean, people have imi imitated vector games with things like Flash, like you say, Extreme Wreck. Uh, it's a good look, really. I'm not going to spend too long on boxing books, because what you've seen is, is the game, really. But you, you sit in the middle, you shoot the bombs, you punch the bugs, and you make sure to blast the things that are going to punch you back before they get chance, which I was failing to do quite miserably. But um, anyway, come on. Doesn't want to quit now. I think the hard drive spun down. Um, anyway, so today's stream... I've sort of prepared a list of maybe slightly more unusual games. I've been looking through uh, different computers as well as the arcades and looking at things that maybe I've not played before or don't know much about. So that's generally the gist of things. We're going to have quite a few arcade games too. But for example, I'm pretty sure I've never played this monster's not working but the mz800 um i'm pretty sure i never played this so if we now play this now this is pcg rally or pcg rally x now, i don't know why the uh, tapes on this and the other sharp systems seem to load much longer than the actual game spends loading I don't know if MAME is somehow doubling up the tape or if there's a system that loads extra data. It's very strange because the game is clearly finished loading but it's still playing the tape. I mean, I can just stop the tape, it, it doesn't care. So that's, that strikes me as odd, um, but there's the same for a few of these systems. So what is this? Well, it's a port of Rally X. You have two friends with the original Vectrex. Oh, there! I, I mean, that's sort of a, a dream, dream system to own, really, if you can, as long as you can maintain them, uh, Bruno. But yeah, the Vectrex is uh, one of those special systems. So P is um, start, A is smokescreen, and the arrows are move cars. So this is, as you'd expect, Rally X, but for one of the sharp home computers. Yeah, possibly crap games you've never heard of, uh, Carlo. But I'm sure you've heard of Rally X, and maybe this port isn't necessarily to your liking. But I do like to see these uh, these ports, especially the officially licensed ones, which this would be. Because, uh -oh. you know, it's got the proper Namco copy. Can I, yep, oh, no. You can't go straight through the cars at the start of this one, which um, means it's not fully accurate to the original game. One of those little things on every Rally X game I will test to see if you can go through the cars at the start. Because you're meant to be able to. Reminds you of Radar Rat Race on the C64. Yes, that was um, an unofficial version of Rally X, wasn't it, Stephen? I've heard quite a few people know the game by that title rather than knowing it as Rally X. Now, I do notice the uh, car graphics on the radar look a bit odd, which may be why the system is marked as not working or may just be the game. I also notice this is quite hard. The cars... Um, Come straight after you. Dear. Obviously, Rally X is one of those famous Namco games, at least new Rally X, that um, got ported to a lot of things. Oh, I blocked off up there. It's a game I remember from my childhood. Although, um, not necessarily the ports. I don't remember playing a port of the game. It's one of those that I do remember associating with the arcade. I mean, I didn't have a C64, so I didn't experience um, Rat Race. I don't remember there being a version on the Spectrum. Now, obviously, the graphics here are quite simple. The edge of the maze there is just asterisk characters. But the, uh, the tune's intact, isn't it? Even though it's a very simple tune in the first place. And there we go. Harder than the arcade version. I mean, the, the original Rally X is pretty tricky. New Rally X made it a bit easier, but yeah, this does seem slightly harder than the arcade. So 
fact, you don't get that little window of invulnerability is um, tough. You do get your smoke screen though, so you can, um, can quickly dispose of some enemies. But yeah, I do like to do these streams where I look at different versions of games. Well, this isn't a stream dedicated to that. I've decided, you know... Well, I, I've put up a list, made a list of... Um, once the car's that close, it's on top of you. You can't use your smoke screen against it. Valley X was one of your favourite arcade games. It, it has that uh, addictive quality. I think a lot of people really liked it. You could never get out over how rubbish the scrolling was on the MSX. Mm. Um... Most of the MSX2 games are actually pretty good. The original MSX, yeah, it's not the best. It'd be nice if we emulated the uh, Turbo R in main properly, but that's got a really funky custom version of the CPU. But there's some good Turbo R homebrew of late. But yeah, it's a simplified port of Rally X. This does get the basics right. I mean, it's got your radar for a start. I've played Rally X ports without a radar before, and it's like, you can't play it because you don't know where anything is. Uh, it does get the uh, invulnerability bit at the wrong start wrong, but I don't know if everybody knows about that anyway. A lot of people don't seem to realise you can pass through the cars at the start in Rally X. It's not a fatal mistake. A bit slower than the arcade. It's in there. <laughs> Smoke screen, get out of the way. There we go. I've never used an original MX2000, so I don't know what's going on with the tape loading in MAME. I mean, is MAME playing the sound at the wrong time? Because clearly if it's playing sounds, it should still be loading data. I don't know what you're basing the comments out on Extreme Rec. I wouldn't take MAME's quite odd loading as meaning anything. Yeah, this won't be the only um, fairly obscure port we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at some, so there's one in the middle there that I'm going to have to get. Oops. Anyway, when this life is over, we'll move on to another game. Because, I mean, it's Rally X. You've seen what Rally X is. Maybe the, uh, the map will change up. I mean, the colours will change up in a bit. I don't know. I am unfamiliar with this port, other than, you know, having fired it up early, preparing for the stream, and going, oh, yeah, I can cover that. I can have a look at that. There's cars over there. <laughs> it automatically turned into the rock because I hit the wall. Very clever. Very clever, very clever, very clever. So, that say, that was a... What system was it? The MX800 PGC Rally or PGC Rally X. It says Rally X on the loading thing, so I don't know if it should be in the software list name. But either way, um, it's all right. It plays quite well. It's what you'd expect of a early port of Rally X, really. Um, I can't complain about it too much. I would have, if I had to own that system back in the day, I probably wouldn't have minded too much. I'm guessing the system's quite limited, quite simple. So, um, shall we just go with something generally considered to be good? Let's go with a shooter. Let's go with a K-1000. 
Mechanico Supernova System Shooter. Well, the tape was very short anyway, Extreme Wreck. Some Spectrum games could take like 15 minutes to load. So, Kyvern is a Mechanico Shooter where you're a dragon. I think I've played this one on the stream a few times before. But I can't always remember if I played this or Dragon Blaze, but um, both are good shooters. Where you're pilot dragons. You can use flame attacks. And yeah, this is one I worked on the emulation of back in the day, so it's one I'm always happy to see running because I've got fond memories of working on it and getting it running. So, lots of things explode. It took quite a few years to perfect the emulation, or say perfect, it probably isn't perfect yet. As we've seen, there are some zooming issues in the Supernova code, but I don't think this game uses zooming. So, probably doesn't affect it. But what I don't understand is the noise is tied to the loading. The noise isn't just there for show. The noise is what is being fed into the system. So how can it stop loading before the noise is finished? It, uh, it, it feels like something is not quite right. <laughs> like it's playing noise that should like maybe decode something incorrectly. I don't know. MAME isn't just making the cassette noises for the sake of it, MAME's making the cassette noises because that's what's on the cassette. And that's what the game is loading. Fun fact, the late Satoru, Satoru Iwata programmed most of the VIC-20 arcade port clones. Some are licensed, such as Radar Rat Race. Was Radar Rat Race licensed then? That's interesting. I thought that was just a clone. So they actually had a license from Namco, didn't they? Even though they called it something different. Hello? Yeah, something's crashed here. So we start that. Uh, my sound's cut out. Do I think, will I ever pick up the A-can again? I don't know, last time I tried, there seemed to be too much resistance to me looking at it, so I just kind of uh, dropped it again. Hopefully that's not gonna be a problem throughout the stream. The USB that my uh, microphone is on cut out, so the sound cut out. <laughs> anyway. Sometimes if my USB cables become loose, um, or the cat walks on them, uh, that will happen. But the cat's not walking, so I don't know. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, I've not sat down and played this one properly in a long time. But I think that's because I sort of overplayed it back when we emulated it, and I just kind of ended up getting a bit bored of it. But it's a very solid shooter on the Supernova system. Probably the best Supernova shooter, I think. Better than Sengeki Striker. In fact, probably the best Kaneko shooter in general. The cat is asleep on my bed, yes. Well, one of them is, the other one's downstairs. Cats, of course, being, uh, have spent the last two days trying their best to steal the Christmas meal. <laughs> Jumping on the table. Which they only seem to do at Christmas. It's almost tradition. Put a bomb too. of the um, Dragon Breath, or Banish as it's called, there we go, got rid of that. 
But yeah, your banish meter at the top is how much of the uh, Dragon Breath weapon you can use. It charges up as you shoot things. Um, do Kaneko have bad games? Um, most Kaneko games are pretty solid. Even Kaneko's bad games tend to be at least playable. Maybe some of their non-arcade offerings were a bit uh, weaker. Um, I think they did some platform games on the Mega Drive, didn't they? Or we're trying to. Mm, is the Fido Dido? Is that one of theirs that didn't get released? Then again, they were probably only the publisher, not the developer in that case. Yeah, Fido Dido. Uh, do you think Airbus is the best Kanako shooter? Mm. It's definitely... Um, a contender. I mean, it's in a different sort of era to this one. But yeah, Airbuster is definitely a quality game from Kaneko. Um, yeah, maybe B maybe uh, DJ Boy is a little weak. Um, Gauss Panic games are all right for what they were. I mean, not really the best games in the world, but in terms of what they were, they were well executed. One more credit, this. Ooh. Got trapped. I also did Jelly Monster, Pac Man clone. License from Namco Japan. Only. What was Jelly Monster on, was it, guy? Oh dear, I'm dying again. So that was Kyvan. Um, I definitely recommend you go out and check check Kyvan out if you've not checked it out before. I think it's a fairly well-known game these days, but uh, it's a good one. And say one of, one of um, the favourites of the games I've emulated over the years is uh, Kyven. It's one that I can always look at and go, "That's an impressive game." I'm glad I worked on the emulation of that one. Um, yeah, I mean, how many of those did Kaneko just publish, and how many did they develop Extreme Rec? Because uh, I think they were a publisher as well, weren't they? So. Uh, Hmm. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, okay. There you go, cow. Let's play some Final Lap Twin for the PCE. This isn't quite perfectly emulated. There are some graphical glitches on the bottom screen because the raster takes the wrong position or something like that. I don't know if there's meant to be a gap in the middle of the screen, but it looks like the raster is like eight pixels off or something. Because the bottom road is a bit wobbly and there's an eight pixels of garbage at the bottom. Now, unlike the arcade final, this has a soundtrack. Although the soundtrack sounds a bit like it's been influenced by Outrun. You see, you get a bit of final lap cow. Not the uh, not the arcade versions, because we've played them to death. I don't think I've really played the PC Engine one much. But if at all. It doesn't play much like the final lap arcade, though. It, it's, it feels like a completely different game. This feels a lot more like pole position than final lap.
Now, I am the top screen, if that wasn't clear. Probably was. Oops. So I'm trying to concentrate on the race, which is kind of important in racing games. I don't want to do that. She's bad. We bounce off the cars in this. It's, uh, so it's not really that like pole position. You pole position, you instantly blow up. I did not win. I finished fourth. Nah, it's not too bad, is it? Not too bad. Aussie guys, Kanako Games. This jump coaster, Boggy 84, Samurai Neon, uh, Itchy, Jungle Survival, Go Go. Yeah, that was a, an interesting one played on the stream before. Um, An Airbuster. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a good list of Kanako games. You're right, Aussie guy. Um, Boggy 84 I've played on stream. I don't remember if I played Jump Coaster on stream or not. Um, might not have done. Maybe we should play uh, Jump Coaster next, actually. That was a little bit of final lap for, um, for Cow, anyway. Um, now, <laughs> it's not the. Are we going to play another racing game? Because why not? Why not indeed? Well, maybe a good reason would be this one's kind of awful, but um, that's never stopped us before, has it? Uh, not found. Okay. Hold on a second. I thought I'd copied these files over earlier, but clearly I have not. Oh, I copied them to the wrong place. So we're going to have to have a little bit of fun with external drives. What was the last game? The last game was the PC Engine version of Final Lap, John, called Final Lap Twin. Because uh, Cal likes his Final Lap, and um, I thought we'd play a bit of a different Final Lap. So let's see. Right now. Um, Ryan, aka Moogly Guy, has um, been improving the CDI driver Not a little bit. Humanoid. Oh, thank you, Wilma, for uh, subscribing. If you're in the chat, feel free to say hello. So, yeah, um, the CDI driver in MAME isn't perfect. It doesn't support the digital video card, but um, it had regressed for a while and didn't load a lot of the regular games either. And uh, Ryan's been working on it and improving it to the point where now more of the regular games boot and run without crashing than used to run before. So, it's a little bit loud. The CDI. It's wonderful. So we go with Formula One race. Nice mosaic effect, to be fair. <laughs> I want to be the red car. Geneva track. I will race. The CDI only good game Tetris. I don't think Tetris on the CDI is very good, Carlo. Drive on the qualifying run in which you. Okay, okay. Yes, the, the power of the CDI brings us video speedway. Which I'm sure you'll agree is the finest looking racing game you've ever seen. I'm turning, I'm turning as far, hard as I can and still ending up off the track at slow speed.
Now, to its credit, it's not just an FMV game, <laughs> which uh, obviously these CD platforms are known for. I don't know if this one worked before Ryan's recent work, but um, it, it runs now. You can play it. Drivers, start your engine. Did I qualify? I guess I qualified. Now those are the cars on the track. It's impossible for me to hate the CDI because it's the distilled essence of the multimedia era, oh, no, it says. I mean, it was ambitious, but there's not much good on it. <laughs> Hotel Mario is alright. Um, there's a few other ones that aren't bad, but really didn't need to be on the CD. Uh, Dymo's Quest, I think, is one of them. It's like, doesn't take advantage of the CD media at all, but it's not a bad game. I think The Apprentice is ridiculously overrated. It's got nice art, but it's not much of a game to it. Like The Apprentice, as soon as the enemy isn't on screen, they stop existing in terms of animation or movement and positioning, and it's just really odd. So it's pretty, but it's just a very basic platformer. This is... This feels more like one of those racing games you'd get on the sort of spectrum, but with better graphics. It doesn't really even feel like it meets 16-bit quality of, say, the Mega Drive, though. It's got more colours than Super Monaco on the Mega Drive, but the art's not as nice, is it? I'm miles behind. As you can see, this won't be the only CDI game we play. As you know, I, I do like to torture myself. Well, it might be if we run out of time, but... Who knows? The CDI Golf game is pretty good. I've not tried that one, John. There were... There were two Zelda games on the CDI. Yes, Dark Star. Um, I mean, you can, you can look up general opinions of them. <laughs> Um, they do actually run in main now. I tried the Zelda games and they weren't crack the Zelda Adventure wasn't crashing when I went from room to room anymore. So I think that's probably one of the things Ryan's in fixes have improved. And the other one, the platformy one, seemed to run as well. I'm gonna be lapped at this rate. Yeah, this isn't great, is it? I think we can probably quit out very soon. We might see if these cars lap me before then. They're probably going to lap me very soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we've seen another video speedway, to be quite honest. Uh, um, it's... It's not great. Yeah, I, I just got lapped and, and uh, then yeah, the, the CDI cost £600. Yes, it was very expensive and um, I think a lot of people probably regretted buying it because uh, it, it didn't do much, did it? So, Jump Coaster. I think it's a vertical game. This was on my list of games to play for the stream, so Aussie Guy mentioned it, but yeah, let's have a little play of Jump Coaster, where apparently bananas and apples are dangerous. Hmm. So it's got a little bit of a Donkey Kong look to it, hasn't it? Not the final time I'll be lapped. No, Bob. No, Bob. So the attract mode here demonstrates a good variety of stages and they've also got these roller coaster like designs where I, I'm guessing the carts, the, the carriages on the car, uh, roller coaster are dangerous. But let's coin up and see how it plays because that's kind of what's important. So I'm the little guy at the bottom with the cape. I look like a villain with this uh, cape. Then again, I am stealing all the money so maybe I, I, I am a villain. Maybe that's. Point. Now there's some ladders that are down only where 
I won't be going depth. Won't be going up them. Um, you're saying help? Oh, there we go. For some reason, there's a ski lift above the roller coaster. There's an MSX port of this by Neon Columbia. Um, and again, what, not one I've seen, one I might have to check out in the future. But, um, I can't remember if I've ever spent any time playing this. Oh dear, got caught. <laughs> the music reminds you of classic munchers that expect from Pac-Man clear. I must have played Classic Muncher, although I can't remember when. Maybe not on stream. These enemies are quite relentless in their pursuit of you. They basically follow your exact position all the time. So why, why are bananas and apples dangerous? I guess bananas you might slip on. Yeah, Mr. Do's Wide Ride mixed with Donkey Kong. As you say, Carlo. I really have to wait over here for the enemy to chase me so I can run over there. And do I have to get all the um, bags or can I just go for the... Um, make my escape? Apparently I can just make my escape. Alright. I see the monkeys up there throwing bananas, hence the bananas being dangerous. Don't jump into the roller coaster. So I'm guessing there's probably a reason you'd want to collect everything, but apparently you can just make your escape. Birdie E was an odd one, wasn't it? Extreme Wreck. A bit of a tricky one to play. I didn't mind it. It was probably a more original concept than uh, this. What was the other one where you just had to get to the top? Was it Springer? That was kind of bad. This plays better than the Springer. Oh, game over. Okay, let's try again. Let's just try and uh, race to the top again. there's a donation coming through, I will wait for the um, little berserk voice. If the berserk voice works, <laughs> it worked earlier. Um, there we go. Um, thank you. To Ryan for the 1000 Swedish Corona donation there with the message, thanks for what you do and your eye towards accuracy. Uh, the eye towards accuracy can be frustrating at times, as you know, and uh, sometimes I point things out to people that they really don't want to have pointed out. But um, thank you for thank you for the donation. And um, as always, it will help pay for drinks for the stream and all sorts of other little bits. And, uh, you know, I did pick up a few um, little plug and play type things recently which are on the way to Sean so um, this, they're quite recent ones but they're going to help with the research on something else I was doing so um, I can consider some of that towards that as well but uh, thank you as always and say thank you for the uh, CDI improvements you were making we'll probably look at a few more CDI uh, bits and pieces in the stream so it's, it's nice to have that um, that run again that's like a, a little Christmas present I know you worked with was it CDI fan um, that. Yeah, this. Um, I don't think I've actually played this one before. I think I've played uh, Mr. Do, Mr. Do's Wild Ride, and always got it confused with this one, and then never really played this one. 
I don't like the way the, uh, the the monkeys drop the bananas that close to you at the top. You don't really have a chance to avoid them. Yeah, you come this way. Now, do they drop bananas as soon as... Is there a pattern to it? That might help. If they can be predicted, it's not so bad. Is that a cow with a Santa hat in the background? It is a cow with a Santa hat in the background cow, yes. It is one of the uh, decorations on Evie's Christmas tree. The Christmas cow has been used in all the backgrounds. Now you can control yourself in the air when you jump on this one, which means if you make a silly mistake and try and jump when there's a, a roller coaster coming, you can get out of the way. Didn't realize you could fall down that. Should have known. I'd rather play Fast Eddie Extreme Wreck. Hmm. Did I play Fast Eddie before? I've heard of Fast Eddie. I, I, I think I played Fast Eddie before, but I can't tell you for sure. died again. It's not always clear when the game's over, actually. It, um, cause it goes back to an attract demo straight away and flashes player one start, which makes you kind of think you're actually still playing when you're not. Uh, Fast Eddie was on the Commodore 64. Mm, I, I must have played it. This, it sounds so familiar. It also has a Christmas jumper on. Uh, yes, you can sort of see in the background there. We could just go with the... Uh, no, there we, there we go, you see. there You get to see the, the Christmas cow. It's still got Photoshop filters all over it, but there you go. There's your Christmas cow cow. Um, anyway. Anyway, what we're going to do now... Um, ooh. <laughs> I know what I was going to do. Did I put the command line I need in here? Yes, I did. Now this is probably not going to show the correct game name down the bottom because um, I'm having to use the long form. And for some reason now when you boot something up with the supercharger it still comes up with this screen. I don't think it should but it does. Um, anyway, whatever. I'm playing the uh, the rabbit game. And it's on tape. It's an Atari 2600 game that was on tape. The tapes apparently are very short. Willow. Hmm. Maybe we'll look at Willow in a bit. We've not really played Willow. Uh, Jump Coaster was designed by M. Kuribayashi. He also did Boggy 80, whole Boggy 84, P-Tan, Flash Cannon, and probably Flyboy Fast Freddy while at Kanako. Um, I've never heard of P-Tan or Flash Cannon. Obviously, I've heard of the others. Are they arcade games that are just unreleased? Um... It reminds me a lot of Jump Con as well, which is meant to be by Kaneko, although there's no copyright on the screen of our version. Is there any chance that he also did Jump Con? So, it's uh, a bit loud. This is a cube type game with a bunny. I'm sure Evie will like this one because it's got a bunny in it. Yeah, the 2600 got everything right to produce some good games. The sound is pleasant, it can pull off graphics that are appealing, and there's some very simple gameplay concepts that just work well. So yeah, you get those scenes, then you get to uh, you jump on the turtle, then you get your cubit scene. Oh, 
Rabbit stew. Well, I'm, I'm trying to avoid rabbit stew. Um, Ryan has um, helped source some of the uh, Game & Watch units, yes, Sean. Um, Ali Stam, who sometimes arrives, uh, sometimes arrives, sometimes comes into the chat, is the one who's been doing most of the dumping of them. Little bunny like Glory. Yes, Gloria is now the name of the bunny. So, we have to wait for the turtle. It is amazing what they managed to pull off in the 2600, yes. I think uh, it was established quite early on, I think, what it could and couldn't do in the techniques. Oh. You added the bunnies to Minecraft, did you, Ryan? That's a nice little bit of trivia. And also, thank you again for another 100 Swedish Corona, which should pop up with the... Uh, so, there we go. So, um... So I'm not playing much Minecraft, although I do remember the bunnies in it, so... Yes, um, I should probably do a stream of games with bunnies in for, um, for Eevee. There are quite a few. Uh, say, I was, it's more of an Easter thing, but uh, when, when I was doing the Easter stream, I couldn't think of many. But then since then, we've had a few on stream where people said, you know, you should have done that for Easter. But I saw this one on the Supercharger list and thought, yeah, we'll, we'll play this. The Supercharger has some good games on it. When did this come out? Um, 83, apparently. I'll tell you, for an 83 game, this is respectable. I mean, it's colourful, it's fun to play. Now she's got ones that take two hops now to change. Oh, no, the, uh, they're changing colour when they get to the... Um, Acorn, whatever is dropped on them, aren't they? There must be some technique I'm missing here. I'm missing something now. I don't know how I'm meant to change these back without them getting changed by the person at the top here. I'm mi I, I want to complete that level. I don't think I've got any other buttons to attack the uh, character at the top. I might have to look that one up later. Anyway, we'll give it one more, one more go. Yeah. Um, say Hen Henrik uh, Ali Stam's work has been really, really, really valuable because obviously Sean doesn't have the most time in the world. So uh, you know when when the technique was established and Ali Stam worked out that he could do it, it took a great workload of Sean, which has allowed Sean to do other things. I mean, Sean was recently helping with the cassette vision dumps, wasn't he? And it'd be really nice to get the original cassette vis vision um, up and running with those. And yeah, he's done a really good job with the LCD and everything. It's not like he could only do half the work either. He does drop by sometimes, so if he drops by today and you want to say thank you to him, then um, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. If he doesn't, then he's on Twitter and you can always um, say thank you there. Say the supercharger definitely one of the one of the things about the two six hundred that caught my eye twenty six hundred. Um, I think there is a prototype version of this on cartridge, but you know better to load the actual supercharger one. But if I always get him to drop the thing there, does it help? I might do a video for the Chambara bug off stream, Guru. I'm probably not going to do it on stream again. I've played Chambara recently. But I'll probably record a video and just upload it of the bug. Anyway, 
So well, I think we'll quit out of that one for now and uh, go back to an arcade game of some sort. Um, not sure what. One I've not played before, maybe. Oh no, uh, um, a wintry one. Let's go with a Taito wintry game and a bit of Alpine Ski on SJ Hardware. Uh, so left, right and one button. Yeah, the, once you understand um, what they were working with, it, it, they are very impressive, aren't they, R09? So Alpine Ski. Now this one, I believe, has quite a famous bug in the game with the scoring, which was fixed on some of the newer compilation releases, even though the arcade always had the bug. But I think that's because the newer versions on the consoles had leaderboards and the like, and if you can max out your score with, by an exploit, it doesn't really work. I think it was something to do with running out of time and then wrapping the timer up. I don't remember exactly. I should look at Dragon Stomper. I've heard of Dragon Stomper. Play Dragon Stomper. It's one I should consider for a future stream, I'm guessing. I go with the ice, I go with the. <laughs> the uh, unique nature of the controls here means this is a lot trickier to control than it might look. You take a little while to respond, so there's a slight sort of latency in the controls and a bit slippy, but that's sort of expected as on ice, snow. <laughs> oh dear me. So yeah, every time you die you get a time penalty. And if you're in that time, you get game over. So it's a little less traditional than uh, a lot of games with their live systems. It probably is some sort of 8-bit uh, wraparound bug, yeah, Carl, I'd imagine. I don't know, it's, it is quite well documented, I've just forgotten what exactly what it was now. I think you can end up, say, wrapping the timer somehow, or... I don't remember exactly. Stream Rex saying Dynacom made a Brazilian 2600 clone called the Mega Boy with an educational game that used 64k memory and didn't repeat any questions in two hours. I mean, if you've got a, a good dictionary compression, you can squeeze a lot of questions into quite a small amount of space. And there we go. Apparently, I've actually completed something. sounds. Gameplay looks similar to, to Reverse USA, Stephen Brown says. Um, I don't think it plays that much like Traver Traverse USA. Um, I suppose it's one of those where if you're playing it you'll notice the difference, difference especially you know how delayed the controls are. See, you don't actually turn for a while. See, I can hit left lots here, and I won't actually turn until I've been hitting left for a while. Yeah, the, that's the one I'm talking about, the negative score bug, Barry. I don't remember exactly how you trigger it, but um, it was said to have been fixed on the um, 
console ports because leaderboard and stuff. All right, uh, take care, Ryan, and thank you again for the uh, total of the 1,100 Swedish Corona donations you made. It's good to see you, and uh, yeah, thank you for say thank you for the work you've been doing on the CDI and stuff like that as well. Because I know it's not probably not the most fun system to be working on. Uh, it looks like a nightmare to debug things, but um, so I do appreciate the the improvements there. But, and thank you for dropping by. So and uh, enjoy your evening of uh, sleep, and well earned rest. Going through the flags, yeah, uh, that bit maybe, uh, Stephen. I mean, there's lots of ways to implement bank switching. You can, I mean, even if you can't write to a cartridge, you can implement bank switching via reads. If you just, you know, reserve an address range for reads, switch the bank around. There's some bank switching schemes that do that when there were no right lines connected to a cartridge. In fact, I mean, you can write anything to a cartridge by using reads if you, you know, come up with a, a method of doing it. Like if you read an address, then follow that read by the another address that represents the value you want to write. There's all sorts of little ways around systems that couldn't even write to cartridges. So, you know, whatever the limitations of the platform are, you can always somehow put yourself a little bank switch cartridge in there as long as, you know, you've got an external cartridge to read from. It's a great system, just didn't have any particularly well-coded games. Uh, that is true. I say there are one or two that are, are playable. I do, I do quite like Hotel Mario, um, Dymo's Quest, and um, some of the ones that require the uh, digital video board, the non-video ones that might just require the RAM look pretty good too. And there's a, the is it Lucky Luke, the beat 'em up, and there's two Christmas games that don't look great, but I did kind of want to see if it would run but uh, obviously required the video board in the end um video board yeah the yeah the uh, mpeg board did neo do did geo do this later neo geo can write to the cartridges and has its own banking scheme in fact it's quite funny that neo geo has banking on the 68k program considering the 68k address space is by far big enough to have just mapped all the rom directly but i don't know they probably just didn't anticipate some of the game sizes they're going to go for. Uh, let's have a look at a machine trans well a translate byte by byte translation of Pac-Man to the Coco Three. I think I might play this one before. So obviously the Coco 3 uses ooh, a 6809E and the Pac-Man was a Z80. So this is a Z80 transcode as it says at the top of the screen there. So this is a more recent thing. I think it's from about 2014, I want to say. Uh, 2017. So we're going to select composite mode, so the colours are correct. Um, joyst no, keyboard, arrow keys is better. Arrow keys on Coco 3 things tends to be better than joystick because the joystick was analog, which doesn't translate well to arcade games. So let's do extended scroll off, uh, which I think works. Now I can scroll up and down the screen using. Um, a and Z, so I can see the top, I can see the bottom, otherwise it just tries to focus in on the middle of the screen or wherever Pac-Man is. So yeah, somebody, well, I think it's Glenn who was credited for it, uh, went over the whole of the Pac-Man code base, line by line, and translate it to the 6809 rather than the Z80. And this was the result. So it's basically a version of Pac-Man that plays as it's meant to. There's a few little flickery bits and obviously it doesn't quite fit on the screen so you, 
you know, it focuses where Pac-Man is rather than displaying the status bars. But apparently the arcade patterns work fine in this version if you know them. The, uh, you know, the final level split screen glitch works fine on this version if you get that far. So this is actually a really good translation of Pac-Man to the Koto 3, which is it's a completely different architecture to the original Pac-Man hardware. Yeah, the sample is a little rough compared to the original sound hardware, but again, that's to be expected. But it still sounds good for the, you know, good for the hardware being used. Kanako, Kanako misspelled Parallel Turn as Parallel Town on their very old website. Parallel Town sounds like a sci-fi movie. That was silly. Apparently my Pac-Man skills no longer exist. Let's try again. Now, I don't know why the, the colours were a bit flashy and the maze flickers a little bit when it appears. That might be a main thing, that might just be how the port is. But it's the gameplay that really matters, and the fact the gameplay is 100% faithful due to, you know, it being a line-for-line -line transcode is impressive. Because, I mean, it, you can say, you know, it's not difficult to do a line-by-line -line transcode, but when you do them completely different architectures, it's not easy. <laughs> It's, you, you're going to get a better Pac-Man implementation than trying to write Pac-Man yourself, always. I mean, we've seen Pac-Man implementations where they sort of just looked at a screen and obviously tried to rewrite it, the My Player thing, which is on Mega Drive hardware is like that, where as soon as somebody who knows Pac-Man analyses it, they can pull the whole thing apart and find all sorts of issues with it. I don't believe this has a, a Tate mode, no. Obviously, guy, I couldn't see an option for that, unfortunately, which is a shame because I do think if somebody does a port, it's nice to leave such options in. But at the same time, I can understand it's sort of a, a niche demand for that. Most people playing this on a Coco 3 are not going to be wanting to rotate their TVs on the side. Now, it does suffer a little bit because you can't see the whole maze, but usually the ghosts are close enough, and if you know how the ghosts behave, it's not so much of an issue. You do notice, I do notice there's a bit of a, a black line around some of the objects. Again, I don't know if that's a main thing or just a, a Coco thing. Oh uh, no, Continental Circus is correct, Carlo. Yeah, this is a so it's a really good little port. This, and it is a port in the proper sense of the word port. Somebody has taken the code and ported it. It's not a rewrite. It's a port. I'm not going to spend too much longer on it though, because it is just Pac-Man at the end of the day. I just wanted to sort of demonstrate it on the screen. The Outrun uh, engine, the Cannonball. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's the outrun code translated to C and compiled natively. Again, quite an impressive little project. Oops. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all my lives gone. Yeah, so yeah, I can see the bottom, see the top. The Coco 3 Port of Pac Man by uh, Glenn Hewlett from 2017. It works pretty well. It's a good fun one. I noticed it didn't stop the disk drive sound when I was playing it, but um, that's just how these are. These things are sometimes. Um, I don't know if that's a main book. So uh, where should we go next? Okay. So arcadey. Go for a Jalico game. I don't really ever play. 
is Formation Z or Formation Z. 84 Jalico and Aerobotto hardware. I think Aerobotto is the clone, isn't it? Um, let's use some different buttons. Uh, morning low fi kills. Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of it in bed because I was just exhausted, but otherwise I did. Thank you. I hope you did too. Yeah, the Coco 3 has got some pretty good translations of arcade games. I think it was said in the Dragon stream as one of Joust too, although I've not, um, not seen that one yet. So I've got a jump button and a shoot button. Okay. Okay, that didn't last very long. Oh, <laughs> I've taken off. Now there's some clouds. I don't like the fact the ships are the same colour as the clouds. I mean, maybe that's intentional, they're more stealthy. Oh, well, I was going to try and land, but there's not much to land on there. I mean, yeah, extreme rate. There are going to be digital services and pretty much everything from them has been lost because, well, that's what happens with digital services. I mean, you've got to consider there were games on non-traditional mediums too. I mean, you know, you had your TV teletext games, where you, quiz games and the like, where it just used different pages. That was all digital, and um, people have been trying to recover all the pages from those ta that type of thing for years. Hmm. This game just feels like it's lacking something to me. It's probably why I've never spent long playing it. It's The sound design is kind of weak. I don't know if there's something missing. It feels like it should have music and then doesn't. So... Oh, I'm not going to shoot that. I guess I'm not going to walk on that. No. Didn't think it was. This was developed by Hex... Hect. Axis Art Amusement for Jalico. Hect also developed... Nin, Ginga... Ninko... Ninko Yudin and City Connection. Now, City Connection is obviously the better known of those. And uh, probably more of a solid game than, than this. In fact, City Connection is so good, I often confuse it with being a, um, an NMK game. Uh oh, probably didn't want to try and land there. Yep, half the Sega Channel's names are still missing. And is that including the, the spe specific versions of normal games? Because I know there were special versions of regular games that were sort of split into multi-level parts and things like that. And Uh, digital stuff's generally a bit of a disaster. Streaming stuff's even worse. But um, yeah, Jalico stuff tends to be all over the place in terms of gameplay. Um, I'm kind of reminded of things like acrobatic dogfight here for the on foot and in air side of it. But I'm wondering why you'd want to be on the ground in this. Definitely need some in-game music though. It's uh, it feels so empty. I don't think that's an emulation glitch. It could be, but so it could do with auto fire. It's one of those tappy tappy games. Did you shoot the bullets? Is that a, what's the counter in the bottom corner? Is that distance? Is that fuel? Need some ground soon though. The shooting at angles is a bit like Sun's Markham. Or Gyrodyne from Crooks. That's vertical. So if I land that. You press the button to land. You don't just dive into the floor. <laughs> I 
Yes, uh, that was a bit of a silly moment, wasn't it, Power Puck? What happens if I were to actually fly a plane? I think I'd go, oh, autopilot, what's that? Don't need that. Nose into the ground. Oh, oops. Can't you start the start of the water section? Also, I'm running out of fuel. How do I get more fuel? Uh, where's more fuel? That's more fuel, isn't it? Okay, that doesn't kill me. That looked dangerous. But... Oh. Looked like I was trying to play Cycle Mabu, but with the um, landmines. Again, not recommended. <laughs> yes, Barry. Fantastic landing. Anyway, um. Yeah, I'll probably just play this credit on this one. I'm not actually enjoying this one much. I can see why I don't really play this one much. This is one of those that was on the list of list of possible games for those uh, streams where I played games didn't play much and still didn't get played because I didn't find the motivation to play it. It might not be terrible. It's... Oh, I pressed transform and crashed into something while I was transforming. Yeah, doesn't really do it for me. Um... I'm not saying it's bad, it might not be a bad game, but it feels a little bit uh, lacking. Um, it's nice it's got the transform option, but maybe it needed a bit more. Anyway. Okay, uh, since it's Boxing Day, let's go with some boxing. Just gonna. This this is a uh, yeah. This is 3D boxing. It's not going to list it properly because I'm using the oh, long form. Why is it done that? Why is S doing that? Um, oh, because that's not mapped there. Okay. Oh, I, this is unresponsive. Now I can remap that. So 3D Boxing by James Software. Turn it up a little bit, I think. Now this is one of the games that can use the speech synthesizer. Wait. As you can hear, I think the volume levels might be a bit low, but um, oh yeah, because I've marked the keys in. Now there are, there are other games that are meant to be able to use the speech unit, but uh, don't appear to work in MAME. I was trying to get Roland in space, which is meant to have a lot of speech, to um, have the speech, but it just doesn't want to detect the actual speech unit for reasons I cannot understand. So yeah, this is apparently 3D boxing. As you can see, it's incredibly 3D, isn't it? Uh, I was going to say, you can actually move up and down in the ring. It might have some other controls. Um, Not got much in the way of sound apart from the speech. Should have probably looked up the controls before trying to play it. <laughs> yeah, they are very gangly boxes, aren't they? Actually, I don't know how to do any actual uh, punches other than that. Hmm. But, yeah, I, I think they should have put a bit more time into the actual basic sound design of the game rather than just the speech. But it was an 85 Amsoft game, so, so that's also move up and down. So those keys are duplicated there. Oh, that was a... Okay, so I got punched low. I 
Um, say I don't really know. <laughs> you wouldn't even get drunk in this fight. It's uh, not the best fight in the world, is it? So that that's clearly one of the punch moves. But is that the only? I, I don't know how to do the proper jabs though. So as you can see, I think I've paused it now. Or crashed it. <laughs> I think I've paused it now. I don't even know how to unpause it. Oh, I unpaused it. So this is not a game I grew up with. This is literally only a game I put on because it's Boxing Day and it's got boxing in the title. And as I say, because I was trying to see if I could work out why the speech didn't work in Roland, but um, I failed to work out why the speech didn't work in Roland. There must be another punch key that I'm missing. Frank Bruno's boxing. That's the uh, punch out knockout on the spectrum, isn't it? The L. Q, uh, LRQ and SBY signal timings need to be correct for detection to work. Ah, it's a timing thing, is it? That's probably why I wasn't seeing what was wrong then. I just thought it might be trying to read from the uh, wrong address or something like that, but... Oh, uh, yeah. How far out is uh, the timing in MAME, then? Uh, the signal's just not hooked up properly in MAME. I thought the uh, SP0256 was actually pretty well emulated, so I was... I'm quite surprised. Or is it the uh, CPC side that the timings are wrong? Yeah, I can't work out the controls in this one, unfortunately. So not much more 3D boxing. Um, I played it because it got boxing in the title. So there you go. Let's play something different. Let's play a version of Frogger. Genie. Are there any good boxing games in Maine? Um, Sega's title fight's meant to be pretty good, but it's been broken since the System Day 2 rewrite. Um, Ozzy Guy recommends Punch Out, Ring Fighter versus Gong Fight, Ring King, King of Boxes versus TKO Boxing. Um, yeah, we played Jellico's Best Bout Boxing, and that was really average. Taito's Final Blow was quite popular, but I never really liked it. Yeah, you've got some tape sounds, lovely, lovely tape sounds. Um, hard Puncher, Carlos says. You love these tunes. This is some good music, isn't it? Some good music. I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd let you all enjoy it. Um, I think we do it like that and press enter. So, Colour Frog. Now you get some proper frogger sounds. got better Frogger music than most of the new reports of Frogger, where they've taken out the music because I guess they didn't own the music. But yeah, a lot of the uh, recent little plug and play units are based on the is it jungle attack version of Frogger, the VT1, and that doesn't have the original music at all. I think even a lot of the versions on uh, newer console collections don't have the Frogger music because apparently Sega don't own the rights to it or Konami don't own the rights to it or whoever's licensing it these days. It still seems to get considered to be a Sega game in many circles but it is a Konami game. I mean it's not... it's unlicensed Frogger. Is it Bootleg Frogger? It wasn't really trying to compete with Frogger in the arcade. I don't think there was an official Frogger version on the Colour Genie. So, 
if you consider it a bootleg or not, is um, uh, uh, what killed me. Did I sink between the turtles? They weren't underwater. I don't get it. <laughs> the tur the, the, you, you die when the turtles are... What? Is that an emulation bug or is that just a bug in this version of Frogger? Car still kill you. I didn't promise this was a good version of Fogger. Falcon Bukan Falcon bootleg frog uh, as a frog, both on original hardware and Galaxian hardware. Ah, uh, yes, the Galaxian hardware Fogger, where the the music is potentially worse than the loading sounds we've just experienced. Oh yeah, jumping too far to the left kills you. Of course it does. Froggy, you may not escape. Or colour frog, even. I'm not sure, Bob. It was quite confusing. I can jump on them in that state. But... It could even just be a bad dump fall. I know some of these old cassettes aren't in very good condition and a single bit being wrong in the cassette dump could easily introduce a book like that. I'm sure they can't have originally shipped it like that though. It's too obvious. Then again, We've seen some pretty obvious bugs in games that did get shipped. It's amazing the effort people go to to produce something and then the silly bugs that get left behind. I did want to try completing a level, but we'll see, we'll see. I like to look at these really obscure systems and the games on them, even if the games are often, you know, ports. But, um, you know, coming from the arcade emulator background, I think it's always interesting to look at the ports, the games these arcade games influenced, and uh, what people made of them, did their own versions. It's one of the reasons I like having all these systems available to run in main. There's always something to explore. Uh, yeah, that is German Power Book. Uh, there's some of the games on the Color Genie that are by uh, Jürgen, who is one of the uh, main devs, but he did them sort of in the 80s when the system was on the market. We had a look at uh, Kick's clone he did on a previous stream. In fact, uh, one of the games I've got potentially to play today was one of um, his Chopper 83. So in some senses, yeah, the, the Colour Genie is interesting because some of the software shows the history of people who spend a lot of time working on MAME. Yeah, the remixes are popular assumed somewhere in the public domain. It happened quite a lot. That's why trying to license some of these old games is a bit of a nightmare. Because you never quite know if the companies that made them had permission for everything that was in them in the first place. Anyway, I, I think we've completed a level of it. it it's uh, it's Frogger on the Colour Genie, or Colour Frog as it's called. Um, don't often look at the Colour Genie. It's probably one I should do a stream on because there's quite a lot of software for it and a fair amount of it is playable, you know, enjoyable. So, yeah, I should probably have considered doing a stream on the colour genie at some point. So let's have a look at Doc Man, also known as Porter. And I picked this one when I was still trying to pick games with 
boxes and things in because it's got boxes and it's boxing day but you know I, I did quickly give up trying to do that so this one you pick up or you catch the um I think you catch them how do you catch them I don't remember how you catch them don't catch the box though Press the button at the right time, I think, to catch him. There we go. I had to catch caught it this time. And then you toss it back up onto the boat. <laughs> if you miss, that happens. So yes, as I said, it's a game of boxes. Well, I'm bad at this. It's a game about timing. Obviously, you're avoiding the uh, the rocks that are being thrown at you too, because somebody apparently doesn't want you loading this boat up. Oh dear. those things too so you can't just be walking at the top all the time you think they're Christmas presents I think they could be Christmas presents too now obviously there's only one position left there so some stuff got wasted but you know the fish need presents too <laughs> there's not even enough at the top now to finish the level properly bonus zero this was likely developed by Dai Sai Saku Oshu Osho for Taito. Now that was a quick game. Let's, uh, I think we said it today. There's quite a few bootlegs of this too, so it must have been a relatively popular game back in the day. But it's not one I ever really see people talk about now. It's one of the because usually if a game has been heavily bootlegged and there's lots of bootleg boards found of it, you also find a lot of people who remember playing it back in the day. Uh, this one I don't ever really see talked about. I don't know if people played it a lot back in the day and then didn't like it, or if it's just one that got bootlegged and then bootlegged based on the fact it was bootlegged and people thought it was popular. It's not even one I can remember many um, home games using the same mechanics. You know, we've had to look at... Oh, yeah, if you throw them into those as well, that's no good. But obviously, we've seen a lot of games where, you know, people making home games borrowed, if we're, if we're polite, ideas from the arcades. But this one, again, I don't remember many games using the, the idea it's got. Reminds you vaguely of magical drop power pot. Um, I mean, you're not pulling the pieces down here, they are falling automatically. Um, I guess you do have the whole catch and throw mechanic. But it doesn't really play like magical drop. Dai Sai Saku also developed Super Rider. Super Rider is one we may also look at. In fact, we might look at it next. So, I, so I'm knocking stuff off and actually catching, collecting this time. Although I don't know why the ground disappears as I miss them. This is the Yodel Simulator. That, that is um, quite accurate, yes. Oh, don't miss them though. <laughs> now you really do have to catch. Them. 
Find some good timing here. If you press the button a fraction too early, you miss the present. Uh-oh. Oh dear. <laughs> Versions of this on Galaxian hardware too, I think. Or scramble hardware, or, you know, the hardware everybody put bootlegs on. Of course, I'd also considered playing Toe Jam and Earl for um, this stream because of the presence, but Toe Jam and Earl really wants two players. It's a nice touch that you move more slowly when you're carrying a big stack of parcels. So there's some attention to detail with this one. Music kind of irritating. <laughs> I'm also doing really badly. Hmm. Oh, um. Hey, right, man. Uh, oh, good, 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 good. We got the Tetris. Right, so that's that's the ones that that's all the ones that I think are going to be on that hardware type, like the Fix It Felix, that um we can potentially see if tell us anything about the speed how those control the speed i think they might sleep the cpu it might be a cpu bug i'm not sure but hopefully hopefully they'll tell us something right um i did say i'd look at super ride didn't i thank you for, thank you for taking care of them anyway because as you know it's an absolute pain for me to try and use uh, ebay for buying stuff in the us now since they changed it a couple of years ago it just doesn't let me pay So Super Rider, Taito, an Adventure Line license, and um, Ozzy Guy was saying this was probably developed by the same company as the uh, previous one for Taito. And this is a game that plays um, a little bit rough. It, it's very much like Time Limit, which we played the other other time in terms of how everything moves and the um, the, the physics. Yeah, some games we'll probably never know who was responsible for, especially a lot of the you know the ones in the plug and play units where you just know some random Chinese studio development, and you might know you know you might know which studio, but you probably know never know the actual names of the people. Early Sky Scroller predating Packland. Predating an understanding of. How many, how many buttons are there? are two buttons. There's left, right, and two buttons. Oh, yeah. That. With the worst jump arc ever. I think most people would have just given up on the game at this time, at this point, and never, so you have to press that button to go faster. I mean, the problem is with a lot of Japanese games as well. Uh, they didn't want the programmers credited, did they? It's often said. And a random game over. Okay, I don't know why I game over. That's why I say programmer credits are often hidden. Because the policy said, you know, don't put your credits in it. And I think you got it with some 8-bit games here too. That police car looks very much like time in it too, doesn't it? And we get a loop the loop, which makes the game look like it's going to be so good. But then you realise the game isn't actually great. It's a little bit like Moon Patrol as well, this, but obviously not that like Moon Patrol. 
And um, also, you guys put a link to the gameography of the company that is uh, allegedly behind this. Well, should be behind this. It definitely looks like their other games, doesn't it? I remember Aaron, Aaron Giles, who was one of the main coordinators, being incredibly proud of getting this one working, because it's actually one of those where most of the game code is inside a custom module, and he had to work out how to extract it, all the game code. So yeah, th this game was incredibly heavily protected in that sense. They didn't want anybody bootlegging it. I don't know if you know what you do here. I can't seem to jump. Oh, run out of time. This, it doesn't play well. <laughs> I, I mean, I have more of a struggle believing the same company made um, Dockman, because Dockman actually plays all right. This... Yeah, I don't think anybody would have wanted to copy this, you're right. It's it's really annoying. <laughs> the controls are just... If you've not played it, I can't explain how bad the controls are. Most of the time when you think you should be able to jump, you can't jump because you're not in the right position to jump. It's like... When I was by that barrel at the top of the run, there I couldn't jump. I, I had no choice but just hit the barrel. <sighs> what you mean, Super Uncle Poo? Yeah, I don't think we're going to play um, any more of that. Let's play a game on Galaxy hardware called Catacomb, which was. Developed in 1982 by MTM Games and is for amusement only. It's really odd seeing a message for amusement only on something that's not a gambling game. I mean, what else were you going to do with it? So as you can see, we've gone from one amazing game to another amazing game. Actually, this one's a bit more clever. This kind of reminds me a bit of a Sega's Borderline, but obviously a lot faster. Shall not be used for space exploration. What was that? <laughs> I mean, for a Galaxian hardware shooter, it's quite ambitious. Please note, ambitious doesn't mean good. Star Wars programs put the names on the death so Yeah, their initials, wasn't it? It's not the only game I've seen with a, a full amusement only either, because one of the other ones I was checking out earlier, and I can't remember which one had the, the same message. I think it might have been the Zillate one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Which we will also look at next. Yeah, these galaxy noises are easy to identify. Every 
everybody knows their Galaxian noises. What on earth is with this game, though? And obviously I know nothing about MTM games, they're not a well-known developer. This feels like it's probably using the code base from something else as a base, maybe a Galaxian or Moon Crester, but with scrolling and lots of stuff thrown at you. it's a bit too tough. Your ship is very big and the area you're navigating is very narrow. Sometimes painful to listen to. Yeah. Is this before or after River Raid? This is from oh, 82. When was River Raid? Was River Raid 81? A lot of unknown companies like Jackson MTM Games and UC sold their games to Falcon, it seems. Maybe Falcon were on the lookout for games or something like that. The track mode is clearly cheating here. I don't think the track... The, the track mode has no collision. The track mode is cheating. Well, it's got a collision against the scenery. Um, but, yeah, Catacomb for amusement only. Um, I think we've seen enough of Catacomb. That's what it does. Now, I did say we're going to look at... Um, another game with four amusement only, but I think actually having done some arcade games, we'll switch again to something I don't think I've covered on stream before. The MTX 500. Now this is, this is one of those systems where I looked at it many years ago and got really annoyed because all the tape images are good fine. Well, the yeah, game images are good fine. It seemed to be in a custom format which didn't quite represent a tape or a disc and was more designed for use with a external copier device and thrown away a lot of the original um, formatting of the, the media. It's like they wanted the most optimal format, not the most accurate one. Uh, so I was glad to see there is a software list with some software, and although there seems to be very little software compared to what I remember. And these are tape conversions from something else, as you can see here. Now this one caught my eye because it's by Chris Sawyer, and Chris Sawyer obviously went on to do Roller Coaster Tycoon and the like, one of my favourite games. So, yeah, apparently he was doing early games for the MTX. So there you go. It's not quite Roller Coaster Tycoon, is it? The ship looks a little bit like one catacomb. Thank you for dropping by and Merry Christmas to you too. And of course, Merry Christmas to everybody in the chat. Uh, I think I said that on the previous stream, but it has just gone Christmas. I do hope everybody had a good Christmas. I mean, uh, Chris Sawyer's got a few games on the 8 bits. I think he's got an isometric one on the CPC, which obviously starts to show an interest in, in that side of things. But, um, yeah, I do like to see these early games from people whose software I've enjoyed later on. This is a early take on a, a Galaxian type game. We're quite an obscure system. I don't think uh, the MTX was ever the most popular machine. But that doesn't mean it's not got some of the right titles. I mean, this is a nice, smooth implementation. The ship's a little big. Uh, I mean, it's quite cramped and very easy to die. You got a Retron 3 for Christmas. Um, is that one of the PC based handhelds or am I getting confused?
it's not the most forgiving game, is it? They come at you quite a pace. You miss a shot, you die. <laughs> the Veteran 3 plays NES, SNES and Genesis games. Not, not what I was thinking of then. Sound effects here sound more like a racing game with the ever increasing um, background hum. The pitch going up all the time. It sounds like I'm increasing in gear. Oh dear, I'm dead. And that's another game over. So, yeah. Arcasians by Chris Sawyer. I don't play too much of it, it's just a simple Galactian style game. But it's, uh, so it's an interesting one, and um, I kind of hope. The, I kind of hope the MTX scene has started maybe considering proper dumps more than whatever the custom format was before, which I still don't think MAME loads and a lot of the images were in, because the soft list is kind of small and I think there was more software, but it's nice to be able to load a few of them. I did try and load one or two games that didn't seem to want to run, but knowing very little about the machine, that could have just been my mistake. So, um, anyway, not a bad little game, that one, if you like you. Galaxian style shooters. Um, I did say we'd go with Invaders Revenge, didn't I? Quite a cheeky one. Because this is by Xenotone. Xenotone, what was it like? Maybe the same company, I don't know. Xenotone Microsec. Um, Possibly from 1980. Not by Taito! Despite being called Invader's Revenge, but there you go, for amusement only. Uh, I'm going to turn this down, I think, because I think it's got very loud space invader sounds. Uh, the one I just played was a uh, Mamotech MTXS. So, note, not a Taito game. Definitely Taito's. It's called Invader's Revenge. It's got um, it's got Space Invader sprites. But it was not made by Taito. Yeah, the, the Invaders steal your fuel bar. So it's a bit like the end as well in that sense. Except... Play more pre-internet homebrew games. I uh, do like to play some homebrew ones, um, public domain games and the like. I mean, the ones that are software listed, sometimes I look at. The bootleg sequel, basically yes. I'm not killing any cows. It's surprising how many of these Galaxian Space Invaders knockoff games implemented a fuel bar mechanic. Also, I don't know how you get more fuel if you can get more fuel. Well, it's cashing in on the success of Space Invaders, isn't it? by sort of borrowing the graphics. Although, I couldn't see any way to refuel, so is it basically just a timed game? Or am I missing a mechanic? Um, what did I get for Christmas? Um, Evie got me the uh, little Tetris light that's on the shelf up there. But I didn't really get much. I wasn't looking for much for Christmas. Um, so I just picked up a, a few bits and pieces. So you can go to the top, but there's no advantage of going to the top. Unless you refuel at the top, but that wouldn't make sense. 
Maybe I'm overthinking a game that probably doesn't make sense. I don't know if they got sued by Taito or not. Um, it, it just seems to have a lot of elements that don't really work together. But is there any point in shooting the thing at the top? Your, your bullets don't seem to go all the way. I don't know. I think I've seen all I need to see with that one, to be quite honest. Uh, so we're two hours in. We have about an hour left. Hmm, actually, I think it's still a vertical game. Looping. 1982, Video Games GmbH. That's a funky hardware setup if ever I saw one. You can thrust to the top if you hold down the button, but thrusting uses fuel, and I don't see how you get fuel from the top. Unless I'm just missing the mechanic. Maybe it just doesn't make sense. Maybe you do have to go to the top. Does looping make sense? I don't know. This is another one of those that was on the list of games to play in the list of streams for lists of games I didn't play much and never got to play. So thank you. It, it says thank you. Like. Number. Just destroy terminal. I'm guessing this it doesn't have complete sound emulation, just some speech, which is odd. It's kind of strange to hear a game which just has speech emulated. Oh, don't crash into that. Did AVGM play this? So I've got a speed up button here. What am I doing? Oh, I can shoot that. Uh, the blue thing seems to be the alien base, though. I'll try it again another time. So, the end. <laughs> well, that is the end of me if I fly into the wall, yes. That is, that is true. Now the all the sounds stop working? It's not even giving me any speech anymore. Hmm. Don't think the sound emulation works properly yet. Let me try restarting it. Thank you. Flight. Number. Yeah, has the sound regressed in this? It sounds like it's trying to make sounds and then just crashing. I don't remember it being like this. Although I don't know how to play it. This may have regressed at some point. Maybe there's even a main testers bug for it. I don't know. I clearly can't shoot the wall. Well, I can shoot those walls which look the same. So do I want to shoot those walls? I can't shoot this wall though. Here's a, th th This makes no sense at all. I can shoot the little walls there by this missile thing or the terminal. I can't shoot the wall at the end. Mm. Clearly the sound emulation is broken. I'm assuming the sound CP must crash after it's played it once or something. Um, you have to shoot the terminal walls. Thank you, Joe. I'm trying. It's not great gameplay design, is it? I can understand why it's called looping, because all you seem to do is, is, is loop backwards and forwards to try and get into position to destroy the terminal walls. Okay, it says destroy terminal. I, I guess that would make sense. But I didn't know if I destroyed the terminal by going and getting a bomb like in um, Sky, Sky Kid. I 
you can shoot the top. I seem to be going too fast to shoot the top of the terminal, though. Um, well, so I guess I need to check what if the sound ever actually worked. Okay. Kind of. Oh, did I do it? No. No, I did not. You're you're, play, you're playing crazy taxi. All right, Evie. Uh, what? Did I, so, do I have to destroy every wall of the terminal? Because I've clearly made a hole in the top of the terminal. Oh, it's destroyed. It is destroyed. That's why it's turned red. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. I, I did wonder why the colour had changed. It didn't really look destroyed. It just looked like it had a hole in the roof. I'm, I've I literally... Can you destroy it without just crashing into it? Because it didn't change colour when I destroyed it then. It only changed colour when I respawned. I see, yes. The, uh, the Mario-inspired pipe work is now... What the... I died by flying off the top of the screen. That's a new mechanic. So from letting you bounce off the top of the screen, the top of the screen is now deadly. Hmm. I'll give it one more try. I don't like playing games where the sound doesn't work, and clearly the sound's meant to do more than it does now, because it plays speech at first and then it dies. But, oh dear. Maybe I should just kill, shoot balloons all day for points. Uh, yeah, I, I, you die at the top of the screen of this pipe six. I, I don't like games that have completely illogical design elements. It's like you you learn to do that here, and then you just you, you can't do it later. It's uh, hmm. Doing even worse this time. Yeah, the, with the speech it would probably be easier. So my question is, when did the speech stop working in Mame? Is there a Mame testers bug for it? If there is, maybe it needs looking at because uh, it's not very playable without the proper sound, is it? Um, pardon me. Let's play something decent that's a modern shooter and actually does work. This is Stormblade by Visco. It's a USA set. Nice blending effect there. Um, it's alright Evie, enjoy yourself, it, it's Christmas anyway, so, you know, you can leave this on in the background. Good start there. Now this is one of those shooting walks that I think uh, seems to get overlooked all the time. It's a bit aero fighters, you can tell they played aero fighters. At the same time, it's flashy. It's got lots of explosions, big weapon graphics, and um, I kind of enjoy it. You can multitask. Well, I'm not so good at multitasking, so. I would not be able to play Crazy Taxi and watch a stream. Because I would crash. This is SSV hardware, yes. Which is actually a very nice board with lots of good visual effects, blend palette blending effects and everything else. Uh, this one also uses one of the, the protection chips that's found on the uh, 
SNES cartridges, I believe, but I think it's one of the games that just does a startup check and nothing else. It doesn't use the protection in game. A little bit pre rendered ugliness in the graphics, but it, I can forgive it because the STV board is pretty good with pre rendered graphics. It, it can have a high enough colour depth for pre rendered not to look awful. It's got enough CPU power to not have too much in the way of slowdowns, but yeah, very visca a very uh, video system psycho like, isn't it? It's an explosion there. Blended clouds. A bit like Strikers 1945-2. Again, kind of showing off the SSV hardware. Strikers 1945-2 is of course a far better game, but that doesn't mean this is a bad game, it just means that Strikers 1945-2 is well one of the best games in the genre. I do notice that Lots of things are under the clouds here, which I think was a big issue before the transparencies were properly emulated. So if you only played this in really old versions of MAME, you may have struggled. There's a very old bug for um, looping. I don't know. I, it, maybe it used samples for the voice? I'm really not sure. Clearly it's not meant to lose all sound after the first speech though. Yeah, Visco got this one right, didn't they, Aussie guy? They also got um, Vassara right. But, um... This, in some ways... I'm reminded of uh, Data East Thunder Zone with the way the uh, mission text is displayed. Also, a little bit of School Fang, but I think that's just the pre rendered nature of it. This looks better than School Fang. The explosions remind me of something, too. Uh, I don't know what. I do have a bomb, which I've not been using. Lasers. As far as you know, it never worked properly. Hmm. See, I'm, I thought there'd been improvements to the various uh, cop chip emulation, which is kind of why I was thinking maybe it broke at some point without being tested. Because it is a very odd hardware setup, is uh, looping. Yeah, this is a nice shooter you're at, Joe. It's one of those really good shoot. I think it's a really good shooter, and one that just gets overlooked. Doesn't mean I'm any good at it. If Visco had made more games like this, and less games like the ones that Aussie Guy mentioned, and Captain Tomaday, which is, you know, as nice as it looks, plays really badly, and uh, they might have been more well respected in the uh, the shooting genre. We've played some right stinkers by Visco in terms of shooters. Did looping have music? Is it supposed to have music? I, I don't know. The comment says get sound working so it probably never worked. But it does something. So it, Maybe that's an interesting task, anyway. 
I imagine the emulation of the various components is better than it was back when the looping drive was first done. Although I could be wrong. AY8910. So it doesn't sound like it's the most unusual sound hardware then. Apart from, say, having a speech chip, which is not the most unusual speech chip. Um, there we go. I died. They're very well presented, this one. Doesn't feel rushed like a lot of uh, Visco games. As long as you stay in the, in the pipe level, play classical music with it. Hmm. It's so one of those, maybe if the sound gets fixed, I'll revisit them, but looping in the current state was really not worth playing. Um, where shall we go now? Um, hmm. Okay. TI-99 for A. The game is called in, the game's called Alpina. Now, this one I was researching earlier, and this is also meant to have speech, but I'm guessing you need to plug the speech module in. And all the information I could find about the speech module, so since it's got two ROMs on it, and a sound chip that may emulate, a speech chip that may emulate, but I don't think MAME supports the speech module because I couldn't find an expansion device to plug in for it. And I couldn't find these ROMs that were meant to be on the speech board. So uh, I, I really don't know. There are other emulators for the, the TI-99 that apparently support speech in it, but didn't seem to have any speech ROMs. So I don't know if they just built them into the emulator or if I'm missing something. But this is a climb to the top of the mountain game. So it's a bit crazy climber like, except it just uses a single sort of set of directions. So you've not got the whole try to use a dual joystick, which makes it a lot easier. However, without the speech, it's not so interesting. So I'd love to know if A, I just missed the speech support in main and I just need to plug in a certain cartridge or expansion device that I missed or if not if the speech ROMs are actually around because there's meant to be like two ROMs as well as a speech chip on the board and that should probably go into sort of a skeleton device at least but it, it seems like the speech was a big part of the novelty of this game and without the speech it's um, a bit simple Yes, a bit of classical music, Bob, you are correct. Stealth protection is always fun. I mean, we've talked a bit about the Thunderhoop protection, where it does the check on one boss and fails later in the game. Sneaky little protections. I doubt looping is a protection, but who knows? Yeah, I picked this one because it's got a snowy theme and obviously wintery, Christmassy is a snowy time of year traditionally. I mean, we've not had any snow here, but... I did want to throw in some that were a bit snowy. <laughs> it looks like you're dancing rather than climbing. Look at this. Dancing climbing simulator. Out for the bear poop, yes, and watch out for all the um, all the creatures that don't ever move. I think I preferred rock climber that we played the other day, which was also a climber mountain game. The snake animates at least. Look at this little tail go. 
you see the animal, you just avoid it. It's like, yeah, that's, and then you just avoid that, but you get knocked down. At least it doesn't have moves. <laughs> that is true. The uh, the sound effects on Rock Clam were quite hard to stomach, weren't they? And this has music, which Rock Clam would if we emulated the um, doorbell chip. But you know, the doorbell chip has internal music definitions that are not dumped. <laughs> is this Rock Clam? That's what we're just saying, Aussie guy. This is Alpiner. This doesn't have the sun throwing fire at you. That tree would have hurt. Right back to the bottom. Oops, right back to the bottom again. Now, I don't know if you can actually die or you just get back, knocked back to the bottom. At least the bear isn't pink. What's wrong with pink bears? The, the other bear could have been a charity bear. But, um, yes, this is clearly the most realistic mountain climbing simulation you're ever going to play. that you can fall down the whole mountain just by getting hit once and survive. It really needs a, a mechanic where you can just hit the keys to try and grab back on or something, but I don't think there is one. I think it just shows you going all the way back to the bottom. And, uh, oh, no, I, I don't survive this time. I do die. Press redo or back. Or what about escape? So, uh... You die after falling down a certain number of times, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's fairly forgiving. Um, hmm. Let's play some Sam Coupe. Now, I'm pretty sure the timing on the Sam Coupe is all over the place. But this is Bats and Balls. So let's see what this is like. Bet you can't guess what type of game it is. Okay, the music's quite quiet. Let's um, do something about that. Entering level one, abolish. Just Arkanoid. <laughs> Maybe not a terrible version of it. I have enabled the mouse in the driver because the Sam Coupe could support a mouse, and this game happily uses the mouse. I don't like the way the score is right where your bat is there because it does make it a bit tricky to see the bat when you're over it. But... And I talked about it in the previous stream. I was glad to see a bunch of extra stuff in the Sam Coupe soft list. And again, this is an example of that. I'm pretty sure this wasn't in the Sam Coupe soft list until last year, so... I didn't get the chance to play it. So I tend to stick to think things in the soft list, unless I find them and add them anyway. But for the most part, I do my research with the soft lists. And then supplement it with extra little bits. Don't really want to pick up a spider. You knew it was a breakout clone. Yeah, it was always going to be a breakout clone. It's an alright breakout clone. Not Nothing special, but it does seem to be quite well done. It's smooth. I know the Sam does run too fast in general in MAME, so maybe it's not quite so fast on real hardware, but who knows. It at least looks a bit nicer than, say, a Spectrum game, but the Sam came out you know, when the 16-bit era was in sort of starting to get into full swing and it never stood a chance. You 
don't really want a machine that's a specky at heart in some ways. When there must be a way to use the power ups, I don't know. I've probably got power up of some sort down the bottom corner there, but I don't know how to use it. Or did I just use it? I don't know. Apparently, oh. right, right mouse button does stuff with power. Laser. Entering level two. Your favourite Arkanoid clone is Breakout. Indeed. They do get called Arkanoid games, but um, yes, Breakout was the first. Is that a kill you power? -up? I think it was. Yeah, this is a catch one. I know what you do, you annoying pack. Oh, multi -ball. You get quite a lot of lives in this. A cheap alternative that wasn't cheap enough, didn't have enough software. The cheap alternative was just to keep your specky. Oh look, there's the little Sam's, uh, Sam mascot robot. Android before Android. Block Kazushi. Yes. We played the actual game called Block Kazushi in MAME before on stream on PlayStation hardware. Obviously, the problem again, though, is that the Spectrum had a really good port of Arkanoid, which is vastly superior to this. This might be more colourful and smoother, but the level design's not quite there. The levels are too wide, they take too long to clear. It kind of, it's one of those games that implements the Arkanoid concept, but seems to fail to understand the finer details that made Arkanoid fun. I mean, the lack of the special effect on the, the double hit blocks or the multiple hit blocks, so you know if they're what type they are, the diff different sound effects, they're all, it's, it's kind of missing those little details that you might want. Hey Delta Ray Studio 3, welcome, hope you're doing well. Okay, what a dumb high school apparently. Having power-ups make it an Arkanoid clone. Yeah, Arkanoid did introduce the power-ups, which I guess was the um, the little evolution that makes the difference. You are correct. Um, okay. Okay, okay. Back to an arcade game, I think. I think I've played this one on stream before. But it is one I do enjoy playing. Um, this is one where some of the sprite positioning seems a bit off. Um, I'm reading comments to do with Konami sprite positioning on track and field and kicker. Makes me wonder if this might have something similar where some of the sprites need to be offset by a pixel based on the list position just due to when the list is scanned. But it's not Konami hardware as far as I know, it's uh, by Omori. I think it's an original piece of hardware. Unless it is a clone of some other hardware, we're just not aware of. Good. It's one of those destruction derby type games. Now there's a weird priority glitch when you go up the hill there, which doesn't make sense. You can't just reverse the priority because that breaks other things and the, the priority is needed for if you go under the tunnel but for some reason there is a sprite that appears over the car there which is odd There's 
the other game that's a bit like this is um, Zero Eyes, the Day 2 East cassette one, which I also quite like. Zero Eyes is kind of faster paced. Crack Out. I think I played Crack Out. Maybe I, should, I think we need to do a, another 8 bit computer stream at some point. I guess it's a bit like bullfighting, but with cars and rhino. It's probably a sport I've just never heard of. Now there's a bear. <laughs> water. Motors is obviously the more famous push things around game. And probably better than either of them, but you know, Motos is Namco and you'd expect that really. But that doesn't mean this isn't a fun one. Also, no car bay is from Konami is another decent one. What's that one on Aussie Guy? You can see the sprites left over on the left side. In fact, you can't really see them on the uh, capture. There's single pixels of sprites left on the left side here. Which could just be an initial game, of course. Goined old by Suna. Or Brick Zone by Suna. Which, although Brick Zone's a bit closer to uh, Block Block by. failing here. Reminds you of Pong Pong by Nice Code. Um, so you can go through the tunnel as well. <laughs> Get thrown up in the tunnel. Well done me. This is going well. Okay. I'm, I'm, I usually enjoy this game. For some reason I'm not feeling this one right now. I lost my rhythm on it. I guess he's just called Mr. F Lag or something like that. landing on the car, don't you? Pardon me. If you try and play this like Day 3 Zero Eyes, you will struggle. Because Zero Eyes is really fast paced. This is kind of plan where you're going to go more so than just ram into everything. We're just naming random games now. Um, so, Car Jamboree by OEM. I quite enjoy it. I wasn't quite feeling it today, though. I'm not sure why. I um, usually enjoy that more than I was then. Hmm. Maybe I've just gone off that one for a little while. I really don't know. Um, all right, let's just go with something that I was really pleased to see dumped, I think, last year. 
not specifically a piece of main news, but um, the prototype of Sonic the Hedgehog, which, you know, people have been after for a long, long time. So this has got all sorts of elements that uh, didn't make it their way into the final game, which is why this one's really, you know, a fascinating prototype. At least, you know, it's got these balls, for example, which you can sort of run on. And that kind of makes the uh, boss at the end of the level make more sense, because Robotnik is swinging one of those balls around, but they don't appear anywhere else. When they appear in the level, it ties it all together. Yeah, the C64 Sonic was really good. Uh, it doesn't run in main, unfortunately, because we don't seem to emulate the uh, DMA chip, or the so something about the expansion. I was going to say, look, you get your extra lives at, at 50 rings, but then I did that. Now, when I played this earlier, I did really well. That wasn't on stream, though. Yeah, at least once it's loaded, it has loaded the C64 one. And, uh, yeah, so you've got Sonic who jumps on the screen now. All sorts of changes in this prototype. Um, and, you know, this is the one that there were a lot of magazine shots from back in the day, and people have looked for for, you know, ages. <laughs> yeah, I pulled off all these jumps perfectly earlier. There we go. Fifty things extra life, and you can't. I think I've lost the power. I need to do the jump up there now, but never mind. I guess, like with everything, they, they, maybe the elements just didn't quite work together, or they didn't like them. I mean, you never really know with these games. Again, you've got this ball here. I mean, these balls are a little bit awkward. So there's something that, say, is missing from the final. So there's some level design, design, level layout design changes too. Well, I think you can understand why they changed this jump thing. It seems a little silly. Lives, 50 lives for 50 things for life. Too easy to attain. They probably just couldn't get it looking to their satisfaction or feeling to their satisfaction. But yeah, this is one of those that Hidden Palace found, I think it was last year. And it's one I've been hoping would show up for a long time. My boss, boss strategy there was perfect. I mean, the, the Master System one is a port, the C64 is a port of the Master System game, for fairly obvious reasons. Now, I think one of the most famous things with this Sonic prototype are these UFOs in the sky here, in, in Marble Zone. 
which is, say, a gun in the final version. It's just a simple animated element in the background, but it, it was in so many, you know, well, it's in early screenshots and people going, well, when do those appear? Is there a secret to unlock them? But no, they were just part of the early design that then vanished. I'm not sure what they're meant to represent. I mean, it's not really a game about alien abductions. So a fun little proto. And I do say I do like it in Photoshop in general. You can see things that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of the some of the gameplay mechanics aren't quite spot on either. Sega Saturn confirmed. Yeah, it is a bit Saturn-like, isn't it? So it's multiple Saturns, long before the Saturn was a thing. Sega were cutting the Saturn even before they cut the Saturn. Anyway, I think we've probably seen enough of this. <laughs> Spike. Bye bye. There you go, say so that was um, the Sonic prototype that showed up fairly recently. Not super recently, but uh, fairly recently. Uh, one I've always found curious is uh, NeoCup 98. Now, this game came after the Ultimate 11, which is also known as Super Psychics 4 unofficially. The interesting thing with NeoCup 98, which is a bit loud, is that it basically reverts the entire gameplay back to Super Psychics 3. It does not acknowledge Ultimate 11 at all. Which maybe... I know it wasn't didn't have Super Psychics in the name, but neither does this. But you would have thought they would build their game based on the uh, latest football game they've done, but they just completely ignored it. Some nice gent must have added to the software. Did you add the song to the software, Bob? But yeah, Ultimate Eleven had far bigger sprites and completely different gameplay where you spent most of the time charging up a power meter and then having a shot, which I think people didn't really like it as much, which may be why they reverted back to the older engine for this one. But I, again, why didn't it just tweak the newer engine? I, I don't know. But maybe people didn't like the new one beyond it, or maybe they never considered it part of the service. Maybe because it's not got Super Psychics in the title of the fourth game, but maybe SNK just don't consider it part of the service. And they, this one they did. I'm not sure. You said nice, uh, okay. So, probably wasn't Cow then. Wasn't me. This is the first match. This is meant to be the easy match. Oh dear, that wasn't very good, was it? I failed to score a goal. I have to continue. Sudden death playoff sounds good. I hope there's beheadings. Yeah, probably won't. Because I think it's a different type of sudden death.
But yeah, these uh, Super Sidekicks games do make quite extensive use of the Neo Geo Raster effects for the ground, which anybody who followed Neo Geo emulation early on will tell you the early emulators and some of the later ones didn't bother to emulate. There we go, my scoring is sudden death. That should mean I win. Now I'm in the World Tournament. Clearly not the World Cup, because I'm not allowed to call it that. Yeah, the animations on this are, are kind of hilarious. They're a bit over the top. I guess it's some of the appeal of the games, really, because they're not the best football games, if I'm honest. But uh, they have the humour. A bit like uh, Taito's Hat Trick Hero, the humour makes up a lot of what, why people enjoy those. Although this one doesn't have you punching the referee. As much as you might want to. Yeah, it's a bit different for Neo Geo because of the use of the raster effect to give the uh, the ground the 3D look, which isn't a typical Neo Geo look because Neo Geo doesn't do native line scrolling or anything. So you don't see that many games on the Neo Geo using line effects. Some of them do. Some of them do that do it extensively, like a Galaxy Fight. Uh, Karnov's Revenge uses it for some of the ground. But it's typically quite expensive to pull off because you have to, you know, do all the vaster effects, which isn't always easy. But, uh, we're probably going to draw this one. I have to continue again, but I won't continue. And we're on. I did say we might do some more C CDI. I'm going to have to squeeze those in if I want to do that. I scored a goal. The Turf Masters is good. Uh, yes, Lethal Thunder, Thunder is uh, more lethal to your fingers, Smedis. <laughs> hmm. Oh well, I won the match. Wasn't trying to win the match. I, I won the match, but we'll move on anyway because there's uh, there's more to look at. And since it's around Christmas, let's have a quick look at a Christmas thing that I did add a while back. I don't know how, quite a few years back. Uh, that Atari Age logo isn't quite right, but this is Stella Stockings, which is one of the um, Atari Two Six Hundred homebrew carts, which is a multi-game thing. So you can play uh, a variety of games. Grandma's Revenge. Hmm. Cold Wars. What should we play? Shall we play? Shall we play Snowman? Yes, let's play this one. So. Put out the fires without melting. So every time you touch a fire you melt a bit, every time you pick up an ice block you rebuild yourself a bit. Better than there's Exum Scots. Uh, yeah, all the games on this are pretty good. I think this was almost my favourite of the games on it. 
but um, it's not a bad one, no. Maybe a little easy at times. But, uh, nice concept. Also, I like the menu. The scrolling's really well done. Again, uh, the Atari 2600 manages to be far more impressive than you'd expect it to be. Yeah, it's got some interesting mechanics. It could have done with maybe more going... That was silly. I've picked up all the icebox before getting rid of the fire. So, you know what happens now. I melt. So, yeah. You do have to jump over those ones to um, stand a chance of doing this level. Restore myself. But, yeah, I can't think of any other single-screen platformer with this mechanic. So it gets points for originality. Can't remember how to get up there. I think you just jump from there. That's bit. And everything melts as the stage progresses too. So there's a time there, even though you can't see it immediately. I think wonder if putting a fire in the freezer will help. I don't advise trying it. I think you might have to be a bit smaller to get that one, actually. Yeah, you do. So, yeah, sometimes you have to um, melt yourself. Just squeeze in the gaps. There you go, everything just melted a little bit. Yeah, shall we have a quick look at some of the others in here? was tossing cookies. This was a, a, a less complex one. Get the cookies. Don't know if you do anything apart from get the cookies and avoid things on this one. But yeah, I think that first game is the main game, the more impressive one. Otherwise you're dealing with, you know, simple get the cookies. It says tossing, so I thought you could actually throw them, but um, maybe I'm wrong. Elf Dash is a lift some presents type game, yeah. So you find the lift, you go up in the lift, you get the present, you avoid the bears. I don't want to get in that one. Didn't want to go down, want to go up, 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 up. get the present, now get the key. Avoid the bears, because bears don't like elves. Can make it down? <laughs> not quite. Lost a present there too. And let's get out of there. Now it gets more difficult. You can run, let's see. Which um, is handy. Looks like the glob. It does a bit, doesn't it? I mean, you're not calling for the elevators, you're waiting for the elevators. But yeah, multi level platform game with elevators. Yeah, it's kind of glob like. Go. Okay, I've got some candy canes, and we've got some things flying at you this time, so again, it gets more difficult. But yeah, that's a nice little compilation, that one. Uh, well worth checking out. Um, hmm. <laughs> oh dear. 
Oh dear, oh dear. I, I did say we might have a look at some more CDI games. Actually, I want to run this. We might look at some more CDI games. Non-violent elevator action. Yeah, it's... Uh, the external drives need to spin up for just a minute. And there we go. We should be right now. Everybody's favourite. Mystic Midway Phantom Express. Uh, yes, there were some CDI improvements, Smedders. Uh, Ryan, who was in here earlier, um, has put in a pull. Well, it's been merged now for um, some CDI fixes. So let's go, Sweet Dream. So anything but. I've just been reading this hilarious story. It's called uh, Your Life. <laughs> well, here on the Phantom Express, you get to relive that life. One. Pitiful moment at a time. This yes, this will be in the next release. You need to score this many so this is basically an on-rails, quite literally, light gun shooter with very minimal graphics. Basically like a bad laser disc game. Yes, this would have been competing with the PlayStation. It's meant to be a ghost train type ride, but does this make it a good game? One of the worst CDI games is Micro Machines that just run so slowly compared to the Mega Drive version, it's embarrassing. I'm not sure it's... Uh, I think the problem is everything's got to go... Th it's quite high level programming. You don't ever pro touch the hardware, so everything's going to be quite slow because it's got so many layers to go through. The idea was they could completely change the hardware out from under the system without stopping the games running. Which was ambitious for the time, but means, you know, a lot of the hardware potential is lost. You know what's so lovely? You decided to return to your childhood. <laughs> you didn't have This to. was the future of gaming, but yes. Uh, this is, um, this is uh, Mystic Midway Phantom Express for the CDI Pizza. It's, um... It's not great. The worst thing is it's not it's by far not the worst CTI game. And he's got a thousand points to him. Almost at the three I'm up. Yeah, the problem is once you've played it, once you've seen everything there is to see on it. Burger King CDI training game added up? Probably not. I don't think there's much being added. There seems to be quite a lot of dumps that are around that aren't in the CDI soft list. Or where the CDI soft list has older dumps that might be bad and need replacing.
Oh, if you want really bad homebrew, we, we can put some really bad looking homebrew on next that's, that's actually commercial CD software. Alright, alright. So you're a hot shot. A big time teenager. Well, if you a different outfit noticed, this time. Your parents have turned into nightmares on Main Street. And everything that comes out of your mouth is so uncool. Sound like a bad hair day? <laughs> hey, man. Uh, the Tetris, yeah, the Tetris is annoying because it stops, it pauses to change the background all the time and it's just there and you can't drop pieces one block at a time. It's a bad version of Tetris. Anyway, that was that. Um, but yeah, that's not as bad as we get. Uh. There were some golden oldies collections released, for example. Uh, the CDI had a digital video card. MAME doesn't emulate the digital video card. So we can go for Bug Hunt or Blockbuster. Now, Blockbuster... Yeah, it does, it's a bit like Carnival. It's got a similar vibe, but terrible. Blockbuster is, of course, another Arkanoid clone. Right down to nicking the tune. Except... It's really bad. It looks like a, a bad Amiga shareware game, doesn't it? Anyway, you get the idea. Let's select Bug Hunt. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Blockbuster like the TV show or something, but uh, no, it's, it's um, Arkanoid. Bug Hunt is, of course... Sushi, yes. Not this time, though. This is more... More garden worm. <laughs> no, it does look like a snail, doesn't it? Needless to say, this is horrible. That was the second golden oldies pack. There was also a first one. If you know, you only get two games in each of these two. These were commercial releases in uh, 1997. So this is PlayStation era. So we've got Invaders. Uh, can I do Dark Castle? Um, I might do Dark Castle another stream. We're pretty much running out of time because we're over three hours already on the stream. Yeah, they look like bad Amiga PD games. I'm just showing some of these off because they're kind of... They connect to arcade games, but you get the idea. They're pretty terrible. Um, I think Defend Guardian was a Defender clone that wasn't as bad as the others. It's actually got music on the screen. This one, relatively, actually looks quite nice. So, you know, you, you get, like, one good game. I say good. One not completely awful game. It's 
still not great. It's, you know, for 1997, this feels like a, a Mega Drive homebrew or something. But it's at least smooth and has some parallax and... It may well be for performance, yes. Okay, so that was the Golden Oldies. Those were unlicensed games. That doesn't mean they weren't bad licensed ones too. Repairing a Defender. Uh, I think that these are quite well documented, aren't they? Guardian gets star from Toe Plan Taito is a better game with Guardian the title. It is. So arcade classics. Those classic arcade games. As you remember them and want them. We've got Galaxian. We've got Miss Pac-Man. We've got Gallagher. And we've got Quit Arcade Classics. Now I'm going to tell you straight away. The best game on the, this compilation is this one. The one that's called Quit Arcade Classics. But we will have a brief look at the others. So Galaxian. That looks exactly like Galaxian. Okay. I mean, it kind of looks like Galaxian. It's got really bad analog controls where the maximum move speed is... You can move this quickly. But it is analog, so it's a bit weird. But then again, CDI controls are weird, and this controls horribly. If you use the non-analog, it's laggy. If you use the analog, looks like the Famicom port plays ten times worse than the Famicom port. Uh, the, the boot sequence was different on the disc, yeah. Namco, arcade classics. Shall we have a look at Gallagher? Again, um, some interpretation of Gallagher. <laughs> and it's windowed. Look, it's got a tiny little window. And again, the controls are horrible. Again, it moved. Look, at, look how jerky the movement is. And this one almost looks like the game, except it's in a tiny window and has horrible controls. These are, are, are terrible ports, yes. Again, this is this is PlayStation era. I mean, they're bad. I mean, we'll have a look at Miss Pac-Man too. But again, I think this is why once you know we started to get emulators, people were so happy and excited to have actual emulators for the arcade games, because this is the kind of rubbish that was being pushed out. Miss Pac-Man sitting on a moon, as is typical. Now, there are okay CDI games. I'm purposely picking arcade ports that are kind of bad. This has apparently got some exclusive levels, if you want to try and get to them, or select them. It's Pac-Man with modern graphics and scrolling. Miss Pac-Man. And quite slow movement. And horrible sounds.
Mm. Yeah, you could just play Namco Museum on the PlayStation. If you were stupid enough to buy a CDI. I mean, okay, the, to be fair, the CDI was not intended really as a gaming machine, but it's going to be judged on the games that were there. And the fact that they could have done so much better than a lot of these that you see doesn't do it any favours. Yeah, I, I get they were trying to make Pac-Man look modern with new graphics, but then when you send the compilation as arcade classics, is that what you want to be doing? Yeah, the, the, it doesn't play as you'd expect it to. It doesn't play like Miss Pac-Man. It, 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 it's got a Miss Pac-Man character. It's got Miss Pac-Man mazes. It's clearly not based on the original code or Pac-Man AI or anything of the sort. It's um, So, yeah. I should do one last CDI game. I wasn't going to do too many CDI games, but... Um, one last one won't harm. Is that the Mortal Kombat font? It did look like it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah skip that. So, so, we have a pinball game. This one's a bit too fast, unfortunately. If you underclock the CPU, it's more like the hardware videos. But I don't think we need to. So. You could play this, or you could play something like Pinball Dreams. But this has got FMV in it. Because what does every pinball game need? FMV. Clearly it makes it so much better. The gravitational pull from that large moon should keep our orbit from decaying in the Caden's atmosphere. Now I did get a bit further on this earlier. It's not even a well-designed table. I mean, it's... It's the bad kind of pinball. You saw some pinball games. Uh, good pinball games are worth playing. Bad pinball games like this are not, Evie. So hopefully you found some good ones. Looks like Scorpion scorched half of Caden. Let's visit Clan Lord Braith and find out what we can do to help. Is that Scorpion from Mortal Kombat? Well, Landlord Wraith has accepted our request for an audience. Let's go see the old man. So I'm sure you'll agree all the um all the FMV has really made this a far better game. And the funny thing is, this isn't even the worst pinball game on this system. There's one that's just called CDI Pinball, I think, which is even worse. And so, the Black Corps made its final journey, shining as an emblem of hope to the people of Caden. Perhaps another will come along who can defeat Scorpion. There's a cast button. I, I don't think I want to press the cast button. Without the FMV, it wouldn't be worth playing. It's not worth playing anyway, Smedis. Lee Bruce, at the top of the high scores. But, uh, yeah. Let's not play that. So, actually, 
I think with that, uh, we will bring this stream to an end because we're over three hours now. And I just wanted to play some random games on um, Boxing Day and, you know, cover some systems I don't usually cover. Look at a little bit of progress for the CDI from Ryan, who very kindly donated 1,100 uh, Swedish Corona early in the stream. Uh, but yeah, I, I've enjoyed it. We say we've looked at some systems I don't usually cover, a bit of Atari 2600, an MTX game, a Color Genie game, uh, you know, a, a bits and pieces all over the place. There were a lot more arcade games we had as potentials to play, but I, I think uh, I think I've uh, covered a, a fair amount, and I hope maybe I've inspired some people to maybe go and look at more of the games in the software list for some of these systems I've looked at, see if there's anything worth digging out. See, maybe find some stuff they weren't aware of. We even did a little bit of final work for cow because you know we do have the the nice uh, the the nice cow in the background here. You see from Evie's little Christmas tree. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Smedis is looking forward to playing some CDI games. Yeah, I might have to see which CDI games do and don't work, and see if I can put together a little stream just of CDI. Maybe I don't know. We'll see after Christmas. But uh, yes, I hope everybody had a really good Christmas. And since it's still Christmas time, I can say sort of Merry Christmas, Boxing Day, or something like that once again. But thank you to everybody who's here. It's been great having a little chat with you. And I hope to see you all on the next one, both the regulars and any newcomers who have dropped by. Because we've seen a, a few new chat messages from people who don't usually drop comments. And that's always been really good to see as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, the regulars. Thank you, the newcomers. And take care, and I'll hopefully see you on the next one. So, bye-bye.